Hey guys, so today I'll be talking about dividend growth rates. And before I begin, I'd like to provide a little bit of a background covering the models that I'll be refer referring to today. So for a lot of students, they'll be covering the dividend valuation models used to value a stock. And for this video, I'll, I'll be referring to the constant perpetual growth model, a version of the dividend discount model in which dividends grow forever at a constant rate, and the two-stage dividend growth model, a dividend model that assumes a firm will temporarily grow at a rate different from its long-term growth rate. And while I've already made a video covering these formulas and how they are used to value a stock, an important consideration which I excluded from that video was the growth rate variables used in the formula. So why should we question these growth rate variables? Well, whether the historical growth rate is provided by research sources or calculated individually, there are three types of growth rates that can be used. And when you're making a personal investment decision using these, these formulas, or if you're in more advanced financial courses and you really need to make an accurate projection of a company's stock, understanding the different growth rates is important to using the most accurate one for that respective company. So to quickly define these growth rates, the, G, the main difference between the geometric and the arithmetic average dividend growth rates are the way the averages are calculated. For the geometric, the geometric average formula is used, and for the arithmetic, the arithmetic average uh, formula is used. So that's really the difference between those two. For the sustainable growth rate model, however, instead of looking at the historical performance of a company's dividends, uh, it uses the company's current earnings capabilities, projects its uh, earnings growth, and then assumes based on its current retention ratio how much it will pay out. So it's a much more forward-looking assumption rather than looking back and assuming that the history is also going to repeat itself in the future. So to cover the formulas for the geometric average growth rate, it's also referred to as the compound annual growth rate, and it's that's what a lot of financial sources use. They they refer to it as a compound annual growth rate. And the formula is relatively simple. You take your ending value, divide it by your beginning value, raise it to the power of one over n, the number of years, and then subtract one from that. For a dividend-related question, essentially what that would mean is you take your most recent dividend, divide it by the starting dividend considered in that time period, raise it to the power of one over n and then subtract one. For the arithmetic average growth rate, it's a little bit more tedious, but much simpler to understand once you break it down into two important steps. So the first step is to calculate the dividend growth rates in each period. So looking at this quick example, we'd have to calculate using base year one, the growth rate from year one to year two of that dividend, which is 20%, and then from year two to year three, which is 41.7%. Once we've calculated the returns in each period, we can calculate the arithmetic average of those growth rates, which is simply summing up those returns and dividing them by the number of returns, which in this case is 20% plus 41.7% divided by two to get an arithmetic average growth rate of 30.8% for this exa quick example. So let's take a look at a more complex example comparing the arithmetic and geometric average growth rates. Assume it is 2005. Calculate the geometric and arithmetic average growth rate for the company's dividends. So here we have a, a six year uh, history for this, co this company's dividend. If we were to calculate the geometric average growth rate, we take the ending, the most recent dividend, the ending value, which is $2.20, and the starting value, which is $1.50, and the number of periods, which in this case is five. And this is a quick, quick note here. It's really important to identify that we are in base year 2005. So we're not inclus including 2005 as a, as a period. Instead, it is 2006, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which n equals 5. A lot of students, when they quickly skim through their questions, they'll assume that there are six periods because they'll count six years. That's not correct. 2005 is a base year and we're not including that as a period. So n equals 5. Then we simply input these values into the formula. So 2.2 2, 2 .2 divided by 1.5 raised to the power of 1 divided by 5 minus 1 is 7.96%. And that is our geometric average growth rate for this example. The arithmetic average growth rate is a little bit more tedious. So I've cut down the process and I've already provided the returns for each period for the dividends. So from 2005 to 2006, the dividend increased by 13.3% that from 06 to 07, it increased by 2.9%. So to calculate the arithmetic average, once we have our uh, averages for the returns for each uh, period, we sum up these returns and calculate the arithmetic average, which is summing them up and dividing by the number of peri periods, so five, to get an arithmetic average growth rate of 8.04%. So a quick summary, 
for the for the previous example, the geometric average growth rate was 7.96%. The arithmetic average growth rate was 8.04%. And so now we can devi define two important rules uh, uh, comparing these two average growth rates. The geometric average growth rate will first always be smaller or equal to the arithmetic average growth rate. And the difference between these two growth rates increases with volatility. So if dividends grew erratically, the geometric average growth rate is much more accurate because it captures that volatility and reflects it by lowering the average growth rate, whereas the arithmetic average smooths out the, the growth rates and inaccurately captures that erratic growth. Moving on to the sustainable growth rate, to calculate the sustainable growth rate, we multiply the company's return on equity times its retention ratio. The retention ratio is the proportion of earnings retained for reinvestment. So if I uh, if I pay out 60% uh, of my earnings uh, and I keep 40%, my retention ratio would be 0.4. And for return on equity, it's simply dividing the company's net income by its equity. So why use a sustainable growth rate? Well, instead of using the historical performance, analysts can consider the firm's earnings capability in order to assume how much the company could pay out to shareholders in the future. And this really breaks free from that usual trend that finan financial analysts assume, which is, oh, the history will reflect the past. And instead it looks at what the company can actually do in the future by projecting its earnings. Now, the key problem with the sustainable growth rate is its sensitivity to fluctuations in earnings. And more specifically, while the retention ratio usually remains stable, any major changes usually originate from the company's return on equity. So the primary consideration when looking at the sustainable growth rate is the company's earnings and how we're able to understand those companies' return on, er return on equity. To do so, this is a common formula learned in most financial courses, is a DuPont formula, which essentially derives the return on equity by dividing net income by sales, then multiplying that by sales divided by total assets, and then multiplying that by total assets divided by average shareholders' equity. And so this essentially breaks down return on equity into three segments, the profitability of the company, the asset turnover of that company, and the leverage of that company. If we are confident that we're able to project all three of these segments for that respective company, then using the sustainable growth rate and projecting the return on equity for that company is, is accurate, and therefore we can use it in our dividend uh, valuation models. So when do we use the sustainable growth rate? Quick summary, the geometric uh, growth rate you first need to have a uh, dividend history and volatile dividend growth. For the arithmetic average growth rate, the company also must have a dividend history, but it needs to have consistent dividend growth. For the sustainable growth rate, however, dividend history is irrelevant. We're not looking back, we're looking forward. And really the three important things that we need to understand are the earnings or if earnings growth are consistent, if we're able to, uh, to forecast the leverage of that company, and if we're able to forecast the asset turnover of that company. And really there's a dilemma here when we consider, okay, well, what kind of companies fall under the, these three requirements? Usually big companies are easiest because big companies, earnings is consistent, forecast and asset turnover are transparent, management communicates at the sh to shareholders often. But for smaller companies, really the big risk is the earnings growth. While the company may grow by 20% this year, will it grow by the same 20% next year or will it grow by 60% or will it fall to 5%? So really the, the main concern is if you have a clear understanding of earnings risk, then you can kind of introduce a sustainable growth rate and use it for small companies. For mid-sized companies, earnings have become more consistent and so it's easier to project earnings. However, most companies, mid-sized companies, focus on moving from the mid tier to the top tier, the big, big league. And usually that requires taking out debt. So the, the main risk is if shareholders have a better understanding of forecasting the leverage of that company. If you do, then using the sustainable growth rate is possible. If you don't, then go back to the geometric or arithmetic averages. So for today, we're gonna to be considering two uh, bonus questions. The first question, we'll look at the sustainable growth rate. So calculate the sustainable growth rate for ABC Corp based on 2010 numbers. I provided the numbers here. All you have to do is calculate the return on equity and then input that into the formula uh, to get your uh, sustainable growth rate. For question number two, calculate the geometric and arithmetic average growth rates for the following company. Assume a base year of 2008. So remember that quick note I made, 2008 is not included as one of the periods. So you're counting 
2008 onwards, and you just simply have to calculate the geometric and arithmetic average growth rates as done in our previous example. So please comment and share your answers below, and if you have any questions, I'll be sure to reply to your comment. And please also like and subscribe to my channel. I really enjoy making these videos, and I'd really appreciate if I can get some positive feedback from you guys. Thank you guys so much, and have a good day.